Good morning, y'all. I am trying something new for videos. I have really struggled with finding the right format um, and the right video style for my page. I really want to interact with the vintage community more, the Geek Betty vintage community specifically, because there are a lot of people who are on my page or on my Instagram that aren't in the vintage community necessarily, but love vintage or are new to vintage or just learning about it. And I get a lot of questions about vintage or about me and my shop or my home life, things like that. And there's never like the right format for me that I've found so far. So I'm hoping this will work. And I'm gonna call this um, Coffee and Vintage. And I'm just gonna try to sit down once a week with a webcam. So the quality is not great, but it could be better, it could be worse. Um, my partner has set me up with a webcam. In the past, I was always recording on my phone and the video quality would get so degraded when I would upload it to edit it and then download it after editing it and then uploading it again to social media that by the time I would finish, my face would be just a formless blob and you couldn't really see what any of the clothing or anything looked like. So I'm hoping that this is a much better format and method for me. One of my goals with these videos is a more casual and laid back, comfortable way of discussing vintage. And there are so many YouTubers and vintage personalities that do tutorials for hair and makeup or that do um, true vintage styling or that like talk about vintage in movies, things like that. And so I'm not, I'm hoping to talk about things in a different way. I really want this to be more like grabbing a cup of coffee and sitting down to chat with a friend about something you found at the store, something like that. And this might not work out. I'm just hoping that I can do this once a week or so uh, and just give you a chance to ask me questions or just give me a chance to ramble a little. <laughs> so it's not just photos of items for sale all the time, but it's also a little bit of information or a little bit of getting to know me and the things that I love about vintage. I almost knocked the camera over because I'm dumb. One of the things um, you'll notice is that I am almost always in my shop space when I do these photos. And that's, I thought maybe I could talk a little bit about myself and my home just to start out these videos, the coffee and vintage chats. I live with my partner and my little sister in a little bungalow. It is big enough for three people, but our interests and our hobbies and our passions have filled this house to the brim. My little sister, Sammy, is an artist and there are canvases and sculptures and um, homemade pottery all over our house. She has tried to carve out a little area for herself to do art during the pandemic while she's home and not able to go on campus anymore. Um, my partner is a big gamer and a big computer nerd. He does um, IT for a living. So there are computers everywhere in our house, as well as um, board games. And we play a lot of um, RPG, which is role-playing games. Um, so there's books for those everywhere in the house. There's dice everywhere in our house. And then um, the person that fills the house with the most stuff is me. I run my shop through the house. Uh, the shop is 100 percent of my income, my only job right now. And because storing vintage is such a tricky thing, I don't know if tricky is the right word, because storing, you have to store vintage in a specific way. Um, I have racks 
and racks of it everywhere in this house and piles and piles of it everywhere in this house. And that's not even talking about the things that I love outside of vintage. I am a voracious reader and I worked at several different bookstores over the years. So I also have stacks of books everywhere in the house. I think somebody asked me the other day how many books they thought I had and I, it's a couple thousand. I have some in storage, but we also just have bookcases everywhere. There's a stack knee high next to my bed. Um, I read all of the time. I usually read two to three books at a time because my attention span's so short nowadays. I have to read a little here, a little there, a little here. Um, so the shop space is really the only area that I keep kind of cleared out all of the time. And even then, as you can see behind me, there's racks, um, there's piles of stuff there's uh I'll, at some point i'll do like a full photo of everything in my shop size because there's hat boxes everywhere and shoes piled up everywhere and I, there's a stack of vintage that's been photographed it's waiting to be listed and finding the space for that and then trying to figure out how to make a space so that i can do videos that looks nice is really difficult um so I, I don't have the privilege of having a space outside of my home for my vintage. Um, so I really depend on this room a lot. Maybe at some point I can do a video in my workspace where I sit all day because I actually sit in my living room at a computer that's been built for me um, and list inventory all day. But that space is just uh, stacks of tubs next to it. Those are the listed items. We have another room in our house that's entirely filled with tubs and tubs and tubs of listed items. I have 900 items online on different platforms right now. So 900 items don't fold up into one or two boxes. I've got 95 tubs, I think, that I keep them stored in. Tubs are actually a terrible way to store vintage. I don't keep them in there for a long time, but because that we have such a limited space, I do keep them folded up in tubs until they ship. And that can cause some mustiness and it can actually degrade the vintage over an extended period of time. Um, part of why I do flash sales is an item that's sat in a tub for a year or two. I try to just move it out of the house so it's not getting damaged or getting ruined by being stored for so long. And some of these items I buy from homes or estate sales or yard sales where they've been in storage for 60, 70 years and they've been stored improperly. Well, that's how you get damaged vintage. So once it gets into my house, I really try to keep it clean. I try to keep it stored properly. I try to uh, move it in and out as quickly as possible. I try to keep my prices pretty low on the lower end of the vintage spectrum so that anybody can buy it. I don't want items to be so expensive that people feel like they can't afford vintage. And also so that I can move it out of my house quickly. Um, so that's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit about my, my, um, my space. Um, so my shop space is actually a bedroom in our house. We call it the studio um, because I use it for photography a lot. So there's a whole corner that you usually see in photos and it's over here. You can't see it right now in the video, but it's over here with the plants and the dress form and that whole setup. But you can see my desk over here and that is a rack of vintage that is waiting to be photographed, waiting to go in the shop. My voice just got really high-pitched, sorry about that. Um, so I kind of went into this video without a real script or a real purpose in mind. This was my test video just to see how it would go, if I could make this setup work for me. Um, I feel like the videos where I'm standing up in front of my phone, I, I talk with my hands a lot, I'm sure you've noticed that wildly swing my hands around in motions that make no sense to what's going on. Hold on a second. My screen went black. I'm trying to fix that. Um, so I'm hoping that by sitting down and holding coffee in my hands, I will both 
give myself a beverage to stay hydrated and I will stop swinging my hands around wildly. I'm still. I'm also hoping that with these videos I can show you a more laid back and realistic um, perspective of my life and me. I get a lot of comments about um, how I must, you know, dress up in 1940s outfits every day, how my hair must be such a pain to do every single day. Well, this is a, um, this is me on a regular basis. I did put some, um, eyeliner and mascara and lipstick on mostly because I, my eyelashes are non-existent without mascara and my lips are paler than my skin without lipstick. So I did do that makeup but that's the only makeup I put on today and I'm wearing a little jumpsuit that is just a super comfortable yellow cotton vintage jumpsuit that I picked up somewhere I don't walk around with pin curled hair every day um, and I know I've said that a couple of times in different photos and videos but I think it's important to keep in mind that even those vintage people that you see online, those Instagram personalities, those influencers who look flawless every day, who look like they spend hours getting ready every day. They have days where they are more casual. I'm not saying I'm one of those. I'm just saying that it's important to not compare yourself to women who who um, put that much time and effort into their appearance. Um, and for me, shop photo days I've worked really hard to try to cultivate like a more polished look for my shop photos because some people are seeing them on Etsy or on Instagram and aren't on my Facebook or don't see my video so they only see that very polished look um, and I want to look polished in the photos for my shop but I just want to be more realistic about it. So I'm hoping to do that with these videos as well. So I have a list of topics that I need to sit up straight. If I keep looking over here, I have a laptop set up over here and it's what's showing me recording. And I'm sorry if I keep looking at it to like check and see how my posture is and stuff. Uh, So I have a list of topics that I hope to touch on eventually. Um, everything from proper cleaning and care of vintage, how to store your vintage, um, vintage collections that I have, um, and maybe some vintage styling tips, but I really don't feel qualified to give those necessarily. I, um, I feel like I really take a lot of shortcuts with doing my hair and makeup and then I'm really kind of inept at a lot of it. So like I would never want to do um, an eyeliner tutorial because my eyeliner always looks terrible and I always have to do it like 10 or 15 times to get it right. And even after that, it's like wobbly, shaky, but I'm better than I used to be. Practice makes perfect with things like that. They say, even though mine isn't perfect when I've practiced so many times. I am just rambling. Next week, I hope that we can talk a little bit about something, a topic that you guys would be interested in hearing about. That's not just me rambling for no reason for a long time. I also thought perhaps that we could do a Q&A if anybody has some specific questions they want to ask me. Um, please leave that in the comments and I will do my best to address it either through like a Q&A video or a video specifically geared towards answering that question. And until next week, thanks. I hope to enjoy a cup of coffee and a chat with you. I don't know what to do. I think I just do like the, bye, see you later.